up the screwed up recipe and by accident you actually made a good recipe and you got delicious chocolate cake. Does this make sense? So this is what happened over the years with the law of attraction and Napoleon Hill's works. Well, I'm here to tell you, and my colleagues are as well, again, the evidence is right before your eyes, that the law of attraction does work. And we're here to tell you that it's categorically true. Whatever the mind of man, which means you, whatever you can conceive in your own mind, whatever you wish for, whatever you want to be, do, or have, as long as you believe it, it will happen. In the words of Earl Nightingale, whatever you think about, whatever you want that you think about, whatever you think about, most of the time, that's what you get. Is it that easy? No, quite frankly, because there are a lot of little key elements here. When you look at all the key elements, it becomes incredibly easy. So here's how it works. I'm going to give you the thumbnail sketch, then we'll take a break, and then we'll actually put this into action. And your genie, in the next couple hours, is going to be given commands from you. And some of you, tonight, before you go to bed, will start seeing physical manifestations of what you want actually happen. And it will blow your mind. Because you're about to learn the real recipe. Without the missing ingredients, without the changes, you're about to get the real secret recipe that's never been released before. So here's how it works. Here's the overview first. You have a brain. It's in your skull. Outside of your skull is what you have is called the mind. In every continent, there are different words for the mind. It doesn't matter. The point is, we all know and can concur and agree that we have a brain in our skull. Whether you believe or disbelieve that there's some type of energetic field outside your body that surrounds your body is irrelevant. And the reason why I say that is because what I'm going to tell you is a physiological, not a mystical, not a spiritual, but a physiological, scientifically proven, just like you have blood in your veins, that's proven. Just like I have a brain in your skull, that's proven. Just like I have a heart in your chest that pumps blood, that's proven. Just like you have hormones in your body, that's proven. What I'm going to share with you is physiologically, scientifically proven, quantifiable, measurable. Whether you believe it or not, it's irrelevant. Remember, I, I was chatting with a guy one time. And I said, well, don't you have to believe this to make it work? He said, no. He said, because some things don't require belief. I said, what do you mean? He goes, like the law of gravity. He said, whether you believe in the law of gravity or not, it is always a constant because it's a law of gravity, not a belief of gravity. He said, if you walk to the top of a roof, whether you believe in the law of gravity or not, if you walk off the edge, you're going to go down. <laughs> And I said, but wait a minute, I read a lot of these mystical, esoterical, spiritual books that says if I believe, I can defy the law of gravity. And he goes, guess what? Maybe that's true. So let's see if it is or not. Show me somebody that will walk off this building and float. If you can't show me somebody, then maybe it isn't true. Or maybe it's true, but so far of a stretch for you to believe right now, who cares whether it's true or not? The fact is, 
99.9% of the people will go down. Does this make sense? So let's just deal with the fact that 99.9% of the people will even give a little bit of a, of a breather for that one person that may exist on planet Earth. Although, you know, there's 5 billion people on the planet and I don't know how many billions and billions and billions over the last couple hundred years have lived, but I don't know if there's, there's no picture, there's no evidence, there's no recording of somebody walking off a building and floating in midair. We're not talking a magic trick here with a crane. We're talking about a real situation. So whether a hundred years from now, somebody will develop the belief power where they can do that, that's fine. But let's deal with our reality today. Look, you're 30, 40, 50 years old. What do you got, 40, 50, 60 years left here? You're not gonna walk off the top of a building and guess what? How is it gonna benefit your life anyway? So let's just deal with the fact that this is a law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. So let's just deal with these laws on how the body works, the mind works, and the brain works, and how the physical universe works as we know it today. Let's just deal with the accepted laws, let's call it that, so that you can create anything you want. Forget the theory, let's just deal with the, the accepted reality. Because even dealing with accepted reality, you can create anything you want. You don't have to be so esoteric and mystical and, and, and meditate for eight hours a day thinking that that's gonna give you nirvana. And by the way, if you are listening to this or if you're here today and you're thinking, I love meditating, I embrace that. I'm not downing meditating. I'm trying to make a point. Whatever you want to do is fine. Provided that you don't bitch and complain that you're not getting what you want when you use your technique instead of the proven technique. This make sense? I am not going to make souffle the way you said because I think you can do it this other way. Good. How come you can't make a souffle then? When me and all these other people are making souffles every 10 seconds, we're like, this is, no, this is like a no-brainer. We make souffles. Why don't you just do what we're doing? We're making souffles. Why, why do you have to come up with this other theory that it's never been proven you're going to die and never make it real? And if, even if you do, why are you going to struggle your whole life going down some other track. So let's just deal with the simple, basic fundamentals of how this works. Then we're gonna do it. So you have a brain <clears throat> and you potentially have a mind. Now by the way, some of you already crashed on who you're gonna listen to. See, some of you are already going, oh, uh huh? See, some of you already shifted on who you're going to listen to. And you're thinking about, well, wait a minute. I'm a Christian. Is that going to be in conflict with my religious beliefs? Or I'm a Hindu, or I'm a Jew, or I'm an atheist. How is this going to conflict with that? Some of you think about, wait a minute. I went to a so-and-so seminar, and he said this, which is different. So you're already, that's why we're going back to the basics, already now challenging who you're going to listen to. Some of you have crashed on Teachability Index. Your willingness to learn all of a sudden crashed and said, wait a minute. Some of you have crashed on willingness to accept change. But that's not how I think. That's not how I believe. If you continue to think like you've always thought, you'll continue to get what you've always got. If you want things in your life to change, you're going to have to change things in your life. Gabish? Some of you are already shifted on the training balance scale. But, 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 you're talking about thinking. I need to know what to do. How, 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 how am I going to do that? You're focusing on the part of the training balance scale which you don't need to focus on because 99.9% of this is thoughts. You with me so far? That's why the basics are there. So you have a brain. You may or may not have a mind, but you have a brain. And you potentially have some, something outside the body. Whether it's called a field, an electromagnetic energy field, an aura, whatever you want to call it. 
doesn't really matter. But you have a brain for sure. Thomas Edison, the guy who invented the light bulb, the guy who holds more patents than anybody else in history, although I think Tesla comes close. Thomas Edison is a genius. Albert Einstein, you know him, E equals MC squared, theory of relativity, sometimes referred to as the smartest man who ever lived. Both of these people said the same thing. They scientifically proved at the turn of the century that the brain is a transmitter and receiver of vibrational frequency. Thomas Edison is not an idiot. Albert Einstein is not a moron. These were geniuses. And at the turn of the century, they both concurred that every cell in the human body emits a different frequency. Every thing on planet Earth is made up of energy. Everything, whether it's a rock, an apple, a piece of wood, a plant, an inanimate object like a television, a carpet, everything on planet Earth emits a different frequency. A frequency is also called a vibration, and it's also called energy. It is quantifiable and it is measurable. Your DNA at the lowest level emits a unique frequency. Every atom emits a frequency. Energy and frequency are the same. Frequencies are what radio waves are. Frequencies pass through all known matter. Example, if you're in a house and you get an old transistor radio with an antenna and you turn it on, music magically appears from your transistor radio. The antenna in your house picked up radio frequencies that are broadcast from either a satellite or a transmitter someplace. That transmitter puts out a frequency which instantly is picked up by your transmitter. It, it bypasses space and time. That frequency from the radio transmitter goes across the ether and it passes through steel, brick, mortar, concrete, glass, wood. It passes right through it. Scientists today cannot explain how a radio frequency passes through solid steel or glass or bricks or mortar or stone but it knows it does. And the answer is it passes through it because the radio frequency is at a quantum physics level smaller than an atom. It's smaller than an electron. It's smaller than the smallest known particle on planet Earth. It's a frequency. Frequencies exist, they're real. Vibrations exist, they're real. They're scientifically proven. The human brain, 